Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you about making telephone cross connects. Um, so this is real common when you have like uh, a phone system, like a, like a PBX of some type, and the PBX terminals are usually distributed on a, um, on a, a, a distribution set of blocks. These are 110s, sometimes they use 66s, uh, more commonly you're seeing these now because they're space efficient. Anyway, so what happens is a lot of times your wiring that goes out to the phone jacks um, or are extended to some other part of the building will come in and terminate on 66 blocks, but you need to make a cross connect or a cross connection with a jumper wire from the 110. So if we say for we needed terminal 4 on the PBX or, or port 4 on the PBX, cross connected to, to cable number you know, seven down here on the 66 block, we do what's known as a cross connect. Now the way we do that is with something called jumper wire. Uh, most of the modern PBXs now just need what's known as a, a single pair jumper wire. And jumper wire is just, just like, just your copper, you know, two wires, usually a 22 or a 24 gauge wire. And it comes on a big spool like this. And um, what you what makes it easy to do this when you're doing a bunch of these is rather than trying to you know twist off what you need in advance is take the spool and set it on the floor like in a cardboard box or in a trash can with no bag in it and then just just pull from it and let it let it pull easily like that. So I'm going to start one and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. But so I've got my spool on the floor. I've got my my jumper wire in my hands. I'm going to take. Go atop this mushroom here, I'm going to connect to port 1, or I'm going to push it into the grooves, so that, you know all these 110 blocks have these grooves in, I'm going to push it into the grooves for port 1, then I'm going to take the other end, now if you're doing this right, and it's kind of a personal preference, you should leave like a little dip of slack, see I took my finger and I kind of, I kind of pulled some slack to hold it there, and then as you take the wire and move it to its destination, keep that slack in there and then of course the same is true on the other end it's it's kind of a, a wiring preference whatever whatever you've been taught or, or, or some PBX guys do it differently I'm not real big on the whole slack thing I tell you one thing the slack thing does make that's nice is later when you're trying to identify the wire you could pull on it from really far away and if it's got some slack in it you can see the slack bouncing so it tells you, you know, where your wire is. Because when you've got hundreds of those little one pair blue wires all together, uh, it can be really tough to find what you're looking for. All right, I'm going to move you in a little closer. Just hold on. Okay, now you're up close with me. So I have to have a uh, punch tool. Yes, I know my punch tool looks like it's been through the wars, which it has. This poor little guy's been dropped so many times. That's why it's got the tape on it. Anyway, it comes with two bits, or at least mine does. You can get new bits for these. But there's a 66 bit. And there's also a 110 bit. So that block up there at the top is a 110. So, and also, when you're doing this kind of work, technically, you should not be wearing jewelry. So remove any jewelry while you do this kind of work. I have to say I get lazy sometimes, though, and I don't. Anyway, so I'm going to terminate up here. Okay, so I've got my connection made up here on port 1 of the PBX. Then I took the wire, ran it down through the mushrooms here. Now, mushrooms are these little white guys. They call them mushrooms. They're used for wire management. And I went down, down to here, brought it back up. And I've got it. Actually, cable one is where I want to put this. So I put it in on the, one, on the, uh, on the first pair of cable one. So, truth in advertising, this is actually not a cable destination. It's a it's a special 66 block with little RJ11 ports on the side. But but this would be the same, though. The, the, the demonstration, the idea is still the same. Now I have to switch to my 66 bit. So I take the... So what, if you guys are wondering, there's a, these um, Harris Dracon uh, punch-down tools have like a little s socket that you can switch switch the blades in and out. So I'm switching to a 66 and then it's conveniently it's got like a little pocket in the back where you can keep the uh, you can keep the other the other bit when you're not using it. Alright so I'm gonna punch down the 66. Okay so that's a cross connect. Let's just do one more. 
I need port 2 on the PBX to go to cable 2. So this is actually my PBX lab. You guys, if you've watched my videos long enough, have probably seen this, uh, this area before. This is where I do my, um, I have another channel called Nortel Guy, and I do a lot of videos about the Nortel system. So I was getting ready to do one, and I realized I hadn't shown you guys cross connects, so I thought that might be relevant for you do-it-yourself telecom types or aspiring telecomers. All right, so punch down up there on the 110, bring around here to the mushroom, up to cable two, leave a little slack, wrap it on the pins on cable two, and switch to my 66 blade. And that's it. So that is how the cable, or how I should say the wall jack, say like a telephone jack, makes its connection all the way back to the phone system. Because that telephone jack, the other end of that wire, usually terminates on what's known as station cabling or, or cabling distribution blocks in the phone room. And then the PBX technician makes that cross connect from the station cabling, usually on pair one or the white blue pair, and then puts it on the appropriate port of the PBX. So these 110 blocks have 25 pair cables that are going into the PBX. All right, so I hope that helps you out with understanding uh, telephone cross connects. Thanks for watching.